Greetings, fellow makers. I want to share with you my personal project. I decided a little while ago that I needed to reserve at least a day off per week to work on my own projects. So this will be what, I'm be, what I'll be working on until it's done. It's quite advanced now. Uh, according to what it was when I first started, it was just a test and I decided to, you know, eventually finish it. So I've been working on this every little chance I get. The All the raised areas and the locking mechanism are made out of warbler. Everything else is cardboard except for the caps on the inside, which are birch plywood. It's assembled with hot glue and extra heat, of course, for the warbler to stick to things. Um, lots of reshaping with the metal tool and the alcohol torch. Most of it is actually done with the alcohol torch. I did heat up the, um, the large sheets with the heat gun. I don't like using the heat gun. It's quite noisy and smelly. With the torch, I have more control and it's totally quiet. So I can work with hours for that as long as I ventilate a bit. It's not that nauseous, but you know, it's alcohol that you burn. So I always recommend to take your precautions. So this is uh, very strong, but it will be stronger when I'm done. All the exposed cardboard inside and out will be covered with paper mache, whose adhesive will be the same as the binder slash primer sealer for the warbler. So everything will stick together and be a one piece. It will not peel off. So the final finish I have in mind for this is stone, an old ancient stone artifact with some metal details. So I don't know if everything like this will be metal metallic, but definitely I would like this trilobite type thing um, to be, you know, a, a metallic finish, such as, such, such, as, such as copper or brass or something old, you know, something antiqued, because that thing has been through hell and is still strong. Although it has cracks on the surface, and they are exaggerated right now so that the cracks and gaps, it is stone after all, um, it's magically held together. <laughs> fantasy I call this uh, this this approach I call it Hollywood arch archaeology it's extremely you know it's exaggerated you can tell what it is when it's painted even before that you can tell that by the texture that it's probably something like rock something that's hewn with you know chisels and polished by by time and, and holding things I love it so let's show you some of the features of the actual pencil thing there are three compartments on this side to hold three of my favorite pencils. On this side, the two millimeter um, graphite, the 0.5, gra uh, 0.7 in here. So 0.7 and two millimeters are both 2B. And this one is the 5.6 millimeters and it is a 5B. Those are the grades, by the way, how dark it is, how soft the lead is. That's the Kaweco SketchUp 5.6 millimeters. I love this thing. I love it so much that's why I started building this after it was just a test and left aside uh, for weeks. I decided I need something stable and safe and visually hard to miss to hold this when I'm not using it. So when it's not on my tool holder on my workbench, uh, it will be in this. So there's only two places where it can be. With discipline, you can always find it, find these things if you you know decide to discipline yourself so that's what I did if I don't have enough space on the table to keep you know these three tools there out there and my second holder right here I'll just transfer all the tools except for this one because it's shorter to the other container I'll put this back in my bag and I have just this nifty little cup to hold my pencils so I can do that at home of course but I was thinking more it's more useful when I'm uh, in a restaurant or a cafe when I need to go and change my environment so I can be more creative and not be stuck in here all the time um, it's good to have a bit of organization on your table it looks better plus it's a conversation starter some people might look at this and, hey where'd you get that cool cup well I made it what yeah make puppets and props and such would you like to see what i do sure here my business card i get jobs like that sometimes so um having props like that to carry with you at all times is a good idea i will probably be making a much more compact version because i don't want to always carry these things at all times so for my everyday carry i'll carry two erasers and two and three pencils and that, that's it that's all I need so I found at the art supply store a container that they sell woodless pencils just graphite leads bigger ones 
uh, in a tin can that's just about this size so I can fit all these pencils and two or three more actually and save a lot of space if I don't need to carry all this so yeah I'm thinking of getting that tin if they still have it and I'll just keep the graphite for <laughs> for backups and such you know, sometimes I do need the woodless pencils I love them actually um, I cover them with paper mache so they can still be sharpened but they're protected against breakage but I at that point I would just buy the container just for the container because there are no stores around here where I can just buy the container so there you go that is my personal project I discovered a few things today on working with Warbla again with the torch I have new properties that I would love to share with you verbally quickly um, you can make the warbler thinner by heating it and squishing it on a hard uh, non-porous surface such as stainless steel a sheet of it so so many applications for that but until today I did not know I could do that so fantastic product I keep discovering new properties new uses for it so um, yeah oh, I also found today that you can make really nice deckled edges if you heat it and tear it past the stretching point so that's also really nice for a metallic you know corroded metallic sheet effect that you need to add on top of your sculpture or inside of your sculpture so think about that I can teach you all these methods and more uh, I specialize in collecting techniques uh, that I've tried myself so that you know it sticks in the head so should you have a specific project and you don't know quite how to approach it I have very reasonable hourly fees for brainstorming, for custom training, for problem solving. So more details at creaturist at gmail.com. That's C-R-E-A-T-U-R-I-S-T-E at gmail.com. For more information, we can discuss what's possible for us. Thank you. Have a wonderful, creative, and inspiring day.